And primarily, I think, just to summarize, I think our core businesses are extremely strong. Uh, we have a very strong competitive advantage. Of course, we're now transferring this very successful business model and approach to a lot of new, very large markets globally. Uh, our new businesses are doing great. Enron Energy Services is growing at a fabulous rate. Uh, I think there's no doubt that Enron Energy Services could be as large as our wholesale business, which is enormous, but it could be as large as that within five or six years. Uh, and it's a fairly straightforward business model, just going in and taking over the energy operations of major companies, and now we're moving to smaller size companies, which we can do with scale, and running those operations, saving customers money, and obviously making profits for Enron. We currently are managing the energy operations of over 35, 36,000 facilities, over 3.5 billion cubic feet of, of space, shopping malls, offices, factories, and that's going up very rapidly. I expect, I've not asked Dave this recently, but I expect we right now may be the largest purchaser of equipment like HVAC, uh, boilers, transformers, <laughs> all kinds of equipment which gives us additional advantages in trying to reduce the cost for our customers and make money at this business. So we are facing a number of challenges, but we're managing them. Indeed, I think the worst of that's behind us, and the business is doing great. Now, I'd like to move just to, to a minute to provision and values. Of course, we just recently established our new vision. Uh, to become, to move from the world's leading energy company to the world's leading company. We have a history around here, which was not necessarily expected initially, of meeting our vision goals within about five years. I don't think this one's out of the question in five years, given the powerful growth that we're seeing in the company. Uh, but most importantly, given the people we have in the company. We have the best deepest talent base of any company in the world. And that's what we've got to keep building. And we've got to make sure we retain the best and brightest and most creative, but we've got to keep bringing in new ones. And that, in fact, is our major competitive advantage. Values. I think we slipped a little bit on this recently, and we've got to restore it. Values are incredibly important to the fiber of this company. I think as somebody... <laughs> as somebody said recently, values are the DNA of Enron. And of course, values are important also to make sure we attract, retain, and motivate the people, the talent, the intellectual capital, which in fact, as I said, is the most critical competitive advantage that we have. Uh, of course, there's pretty simple respect, respect for others, and just treating them the same way you want to be treated. And I don't think many people like to be treated poorly. Uh, integrity, incredibly important. And I think this one also has slipped a little bit. Uh, but integrity, not just in our business dealings, but also in our personal lives. A recent book uh, put that was written by Tom Neff of Spencer Sturt listed six characteristics of both CEOs, but then also employees or managers and executives for success. Number one was integrity. It's pretty hard to lead if people don't trust you. So we got to make sure we get back to that in everything we do. Communication. Again, speaking up, it's not, it's not just an opportunity, it's an obligation. If you're in meetings and you don't like what you see or what you hear, speak up. And if you get penalized for it, come see me. But we've got to all share our ideas. We've got to all be willing to also speak up when things are going on or things are being planned or things are being done you don't like. Finally, excellence. I mean, Enron for 15 years has set the standard first for this industry and increasingly for a lot of other industries. 
And that's because we've always been the best at what we did. And we've got to keep doing that. We've got to get back to doing that if we're not doing that. But excellence in everything we do. Okay, let me... Uh, Let me kind of, uh, two, two things, and I'm going to get to Q&A. Uh, as you'll see in a minute, and it's not surprising, but many of you are concerned about the, uh, about the value of your stock options. I'm concerned about the value of my stock options. <laughs> and my stock. <laughs> uh, but we did, of course, uh, issue our most recent stock options in January this year, and as we had as, as, as proposed or as, as adopted in that plan, we do that every five years, and when we do it, we issue five years' worth of options. And then, of course, as new people come in the company, while well, we issue options to them, whether it be you know, four years or three years or two years or so forth, until the next, next cycle. But many of you pointed out that we issued those options at $83, and they're somewhat out of the money today. And I'm, I'm glad you know that. <laughs> Uh, so what I did at the most recent comp committee uh, and board meeting was recommend that we have a one-year award, not a five-year, a one-year award out of cycle, special award for all employees now, and it's approved. So you'll get new stock options awarded to you at these prices, and just to roughly, about, roughly equivalent to about 5% of your uh, of your salary. Uh, <laughs> now, it won't make you rich, but it might make you feel better. <laughs> uh, but for example, if you're making about 50000 a year, you'll get about 150 options. If you're making 100000 a year, obviously about 300. Good, you got that. Pretty, 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 pretty complicated mathematics. Uh, but that will be worked. Uh, of course, we have to get the specific amount next to each name and all the rest of it. So if the administrative stuff has to be done, you won't get notified for a few, few days, maybe even two or three weeks. But, uh, but it's done. And uh, well deserved. And primarily, uh, we certainly think we're, we're close to, if not at the bottom of this, this, this cycle. And, uh, and we want you to enjoy the ride back up. But more importantly, I want you to work hard to make sure that we get that ride back up. Uh, so that's done. Now, I'm going to mention one other thing. Uh, we've got a United Way campaign underway. And uh, it's supposed to finish. Uh, it's either Friday or Monday. And indeed, uh, we're not doing very well. Uh, right now, with just two or three days left, uh, we only, we're only about 77% of our goal. Our goal this year is about 2.9 million. And we only have about 42% participation, when we usually have about double that. Uh, so a lot of you have not stepped up yet. Now, this is the one opportunity we have to step up and contribute to an organization that helps take care of a lot of people throughout our community that uh, don't have stock options don't have jobs. Many of them don't have lives. And of course, particularly with the recent flood, the needs in this community are even greater. There are a lot of families that are 